So take a look at these two descriptions. Here's the first. I needed more books and movies from the library. Now here's the second. I had read the last book in the Game of Thrones series and pretty much memorized the dialogue of the Doctor Who DVDs I borrowed last weekend. What's the difference between these two? Both present the same basic information, but in the second sentence, which comes from the sample essay in the exercise files, it mentions specific details. Not just books, but the last book in the Game of Thrones series. Not just any movies, but Doctor Who DVDs. Now, try substituting Twilight for Game of Thrones, or The Bachelor for Doctor Who. How does that change your image of the person who wrote this essay? Fiction writers use specific details for indirect characterization, like we talked about in our last movie with the example from The Scarlet Letter. But in narrative writing, specific details also help to add an element of truthfulness to writing. This can be really important when you're trying to connect with an admissions reader who is tired of generic, anonymous submissions. Compare phrases like, I enjoy volunteering for the Humane Society in my free time, to something like, Although the stench of cat urine will never come out of my favorite Doc Martens, I have never regretted devoting my weekends for the past six months to the West Shore Humane Society. That second sentence shows me so much more about that student, it's this kind of distinction that will set your essay apart from the dozens that feature phrases similar to that first one. So whenever you can, try to include the name of a brand or a chain store or a city, maybe even a person. Even if you have to make up a name for that person, that's fine. It's the level of detail that matters. The difference between, my best friend says that I will appreciate this someday, and according to my best friend Ava, I will appreciate this someday, is a subtle but significant one. Remember the rhetorical triangle we talked about? Logos relies on appeals to logic, pathos on appeals to emotion. Ethos, however, rests solely with the credibility of the writer. You can build ethos by establishing connections to outside sources. You're not just a generic, cookie-cutter applicant, but a real live person who connects to real, specific details. So as you're writing your draft, and particularly as you're revising your essay, be aware of places that rely on vague or overly generalized information. And whenever possible, try to revise those generalizations into specific details. You'll be far more likely to connect to your reader if you do.